Here's a GE tube radio from the late 1930s and some of you may recall that I did a preliminary video about this radio when I first received it from a YouTube member. Well, it's been sitting on a shelf in my bedroom since I got it and I've been admiring it, but today I decided today is going to be the day that uh, I take steps to make this thing operate, or operate again or at least do everything in my power to make it operate. So the first thing we want to do is remove the chassis from the cabinet and in order to do that we first have to remove the knobs and let me turn this off I can't can't do this one-handed so. so here are all the knobs right here and we'll just place them in this little bag so we don't lose them. The last thing you want to do is lose parts to one of these old radios, especially knobs, because they can be very hard to come by. Now we'll turn it around and look at the inside. So here's the chassis. And the next thing we want to do is remove the bolts that hold the chassis to the underside of the cabinet and then slide the chassis out. And here's our chassis mounting bolts. See they have a standard quarter inch bolt here. Down here we have a bolt that's going to require a flathead screwdriver and this bolt is missing. So, get this one out first. And now we will remove this one. Okay. This is very interesting trying to do this one-handed. Okay, let me turn the camera off for a second. Okay, bolts have been removed and we'll just drop them down in our little bag here. is not to lose them. Now the chassis is loose so when I pick the radio back up I'll have to be real careful not to let the chassis fall out. And once you have the chassis unbolted it just simply slides out of the cabinet. In this particular model we have a speaker cable that plugs onto the speaker. In some models the speaker is bolted onto the chassis so that the whole thing just slides out together but this one is two separate pieces so we'll first want to slide the chassis out completely and the chassis is now removed from the cabinet now the next thing we want to do is remove the speaker and it's held in place by a couple of nuts so we'll just remove those nuts and the speaker should come right out and here's our speaker and this little metal bracket here is the frame that goes around the audio output transformer. At some point in this radio's life this had come loose and the transformer is just dangling here. This type of speaker is known as an electrodynamic speaker. It uses a field coil instead of a permanent magnet and the field coil also serves as a filter choke in the radio's power supply the cone looks in pretty good shape. There's a couple of places that I need to patch there, but this speaker is probably salvageable. Okay, now we want to put our cabinet to the side while we work on the chassis. So as to keep the cabinet from getting damaged, we'll put it in a safe place. Now that we have everything removed from the cabinet, the first thing I like to do is just eyeball everything and just kind of see where I need to go with this. Obviously this speaker output transformer needs to be fixed. 
and here's our cable going to the speaker that I want to replace with modern wiring because it's obvious this has been patched with electrical tape several times over the life of the radio and I just think it would be better just to replace this entire cable with fresh new wiring and here's our power cord that it's obviously been replaced at some point in time but once again I'm going to replace that with a fresh new power cord and I assume this is probably an antenna wire and of course the chassis just needs the usual cleaning that most of these do and it appears all our tubes are present and our dial string is not broken that all seems to work okay all the other controls seem to be nice and free so just a little general cleaning and lubrication should fix them right up okay let's look under the chassis and see what we find under there here's the underside of the chassis I uh, can see definitely where the power cord has been spliced onto the original end where the original power cord attached and all that will have to be fixed and made to look neater. These electrolytic filter capacitors have been replaced at some point. I see an early Sprague Atom cap here that probably dates from the 1950s or early 60s and here's more capacitors one here one here that looks like an original here's one here these are the old wax paper capacitors and there's several more under here now all of those wax paper and electrolytic capacitors will have to be changed as these capacitors age they become leaky and can even short completely and when this happens it causes the radio to draw too much current which can burn up expensive parts like a power transformer so you know there's no need in chancing it these capacitors are very cheap you can usually recap one of these for well under fifteen dollars often under ten dollars so best to spend a little money now on capacitors instead of spending a lot of money later on an expensive power transformer that you may not be able to get anyway so that's where we stand this looks like it's going to be a routine restoration so far just a good cleanup and capacitor replacement and replace some of the wiring and do some basic alignment and this radio will probably be good to go again the next thing I'd like to do before I get too involved in this is to check the condition of the power transformer and the way I like to do that is remove the is to remove the rectifier tube that's the tube that converts the AC output of the transformer into a DC voltage that the circuits in the radio want to see and I usually do that by removing the rectifier tube which in this case is a type 80 tube which is a very common rectifier that way that prevents the power supply from coming up so all I have is the raw AC voltage coming off the transformer and then I will connect my DC voltmeter to the various output windings of the transformer and if all my voltages look like what I think they should and if the transformer doesn't smoke or run hot then we should have a good transformer and we can safely proceed with the restoration of this radio if the transformer is bad I'll just have to locate one somewhere on these power transformers there are, are three secondary windings that we generally need to concern ourselves with of course the primary winding is the incoming 120 volts AC from your household electrical system and our three secondary windings consist of a 6.3 volt filament winding that provides filament voltage for these tubes here 
a 5 volt filament winding which provides filament voltage for the rectifier tube and a high voltage winding that's generally a center tapped winding that's usually 700 volts, 7 to 800 volts total with you know with it being center tapped you have between 350 and 400 volts from each side to the center tap so that's what we want to check for and if those voltages are okay and if the transformer doesn't overheat we'll be in business okay I have my AC voltmeter connected to one half of the high voltage winding and the radio plugged into my heat kit variable output isolation transformer radios turned on we're gonna throw the switch and gradually increase our AC input until we reach 120 volts okay We're at 120 volts and we just rounded up to 340 volts coming off of that side of the winding. So we'll remove our clip lead and move it over here to the other side of the high voltage winding. Turn the power back on. And we have approximately the same amount of voltage there so that's good so far so good next thing we want to do is check the rectifier filament volt and our rectifier filament voltage looks good 5.74 volts and here's our filament voltage should normally be 6.3 volts we're reading 6.89 which is no big deal and I'm actually running this thing on 120 volts and technically these transformers were designed more for 110 to 115 so but no big deal there if this transformer doesn't overheat we're in business okay this thing's been on for about 30 minutes now and there's no smoke no sizzles no uh, abnormal sounds the transformers not even warm to the touch we're still maintaining stable output voltage so as far as I'm concerned this transformer is good and in the next video we'll move on to the capacitors and other things that need to be addressed.